So the subject of this video is the conditional claim, more specifically, uh, the uh, way that the sufficient condition and the necessary condition function in a conditional claim. We'll also get to talking a little bit about just what a sufficient condition is, just what a necessary condition is. Um, and this combined conversation will uh, help us with work that we're doing actually across uh, the, the semester. Argument is constituted by statements. Well, what's a statement? A statement is a sentence that is true or false, which is to say a statement is a sentence with a truth value. No other type of sentence, a question, an exclamation, a command, can be a candidate for an argument because none of those has a truth value and an argument uh, is geared toward establishing truth. So what we're going to do as we go forward is learn how to analyze the logical structure of a statement from a couple of different standpoints. One is within the system of deduction known as sentential or propositional logic. The other is within a system of deductive logic known as categorical logic. For right now, we're going to focus on sentential or propositional uh, logic. Uh, so here, uh, statements are analyzed for their logical structure in terms of connectives uh, that govern constituent elements or constituent statements. So we've got uh, simple or atomic sentences, and then we have compound sentences. And what uh, makes up a compound sentence is at least one simple sentence and at least one connective. A simple sentence is a sentence without a connective. So we're, we'll end up seeing a total of five connectives. What we're focusing on today is the connective known as the conditional. Okay, so uh, if we focus on the connective, uh, or sorry, if we focus on the conditional claim and we think about uh, the conditional claim as exhibiting a connective, then it's going to set us up, I hope nicely, for a discussion of sufficiency and necessity, which we very often get wrong. Um, the, the, the conditional claim, uh, insofar as it is the, 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 uh, the structure within which sufficiency and necessity are articulated um, can be really difficult at times. We also, just in our sort of general lives, maybe also in our scientific investigations where uh, statements um, about sufficiency and necessity occur a, a lot, uh, similarly in law, right? We might get the identification of a sufficient condition wrong. We might get the identification of a necessary condition wrong. So if going back again to the, to the structure uh, of a conditional claim, if we study that, I think we're going to be in a better position to understand what makes sufficiency, what makes necessity. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this process of understanding sufficiency and necessity by way of an analysis of the conditional claims structure. All right, so let's talk about some of the basics of conditional claims so that we can better understand what uh, a sufficient condition is, what a necessary condition is, as well as how they function uh, in a conditional claim. So first, we start with the structure of a conditional claim. We have the following, if A, then B, or if A, B. If, or if then, is the connective that connects A with B. The if clause is called the antecedent, and the then clause is called the consequent. So, in this case, A is the antecedent, B is the consequent. When we say if A, B, we're asserting a relationship between A and B by way of the conditional structure. One way we can think about the relationship between antecedent and consequent is in terms of a sufficient condition and a necessary condition. The antecedent goes in the if position, the consequent goes in the then position. So we get if the antecedent 
than the consequent. Let's now replace antecedent and consequent with sufficient condition and necessary condition. So we get if sufficient condition, then necessary condition. Notice that a sufficient condition is asserted with the if clause. The necessary condition is asserted with the then clause. Suppose I have the following claim. If I am presently logged into Instagram, I am presently on social media. The antecedent, I am presently logged into Instagram, is claimed to guarantee that I am presently on social media. In other words, the claim is that being on Instagram at present is enough for me to presently be on social media. Again, if I am presently logged into Instagram, I am presently on social media. The consequent, I am presently on social media, is what must be the case, or it is claimed it is what must be the case, it has been determined by the sufficient condition. Another way to put things is this. If I am on Instagram, then I must be on social media. It is necessarily the case that I am on social media. The necessary condition is the happening without which another condition does not obtain. In the context of the if-then claim, when the necessary condition does not obtain, that means that the antecedent condition does not obtain. Let's think of sufficiency and necessity now in terms of logical relationships between the antecedent and the consequent. Affirming the antecedent and denying the consequent are logical structures we will learn. We've actually already started talking about them in, in this video. Think about sufficiency in terms of what happens when the sufficient condition obtains. Because remember, the if in the conditional claim does not assert anything other than a hypothetical or a condition. So when we affirm the antecedent, we're saying that the claimed sufficient condition is in fact the case. So when we return to our previous example, we get the following. If I am presently logged into Instagram, I am presently on social media. The antecedent I am presently logged into Instagram implies that I am presently on social media. But am I presently logged into Instagram? Right. So, so the, the question here is, uh, do we say that the sufficient condition obtains, in which case it guarantees the consequent or it guarantees a state of affairs? So we say yes. I am presently logged in on Instagram. Since the sufficient condition obtains, the result I'm on social media is guaranteed, as I just mentioned. Here's the form of the reasoning. If I am presently logged into Instagram, I am presently on social media. I am presently logged into Instagram, so I am presently on social media. Right. So affirming the antecedent saying, yes, the sufficient condition obtains, is what guarantees the consequent. What if we don't have the antecedent? What if the condition we said is sufficient does not in fact obtain? What then? So remember, to say first, to say we have a sufficient condition is to say a happening is guaranteed. If the sufficient condition does not obtain, in other words, what if it's not the case that I'm on Instagram using the, the example that I've, I've been threading through this uh, video? Does it follow then that I am not on social media? Let's look. If I'm presently logged into Instagram, then I am on social media. I'm not presently logged into, into Instagram. I'm not on social media. If you find yourself saying, well, maybe, but maybe not, in other words, if the inference is not guaranteed, then you realize that denying the antecedent doesn't give you anything, uh, um, uh, con not concrete, doesn't give you anything certain about the consequent, right? You find yourself saying, well, I could presently be logged into Facebook or TikTok, for example, in which case you'd be uh, on social media. So not being logged into Instagram does not uh, impact 
whether or not you're on social media. The only time that the, the guarantee occurs is when the sufficient condition actually obtains. Now, let's go ahead and look at the analog to the, the um, item we've just uh, discussed, namely uh, what happens when we affirm the consequent. Right, so this was was uh, and it, this this is partly what tends to confuse us when we're thinking about sufficient conditions and necessary conditions. All right, so we know that the necessary condition is the one without which another happening is not going to obtain. For the same reason, the inference fails when we deny the antecedent. The inference fails here, namely when we affirm the consequent. Let's look. Same example. If I'm presently logged into Instagram, I'm presently on social media. I am presently on social media. So I am presently logged into Instagram. You might say, not necessarily. In other words, affirming the consequent, that is saying that the necessary condition has obtained, does not tell you anything about the antecedent. In other words, it could be the case in this scenario that, again, you're logged into TikTok, Facebook, whatever, right? So denying the antecedent doesn't tell us anything about the consequent, right? So to say that a condition is not sufficient doesn't tell us anything about the consequent. Affirming the consequent, similarly, doesn't tell us anything about the antecedent. We'll study this some more. But let's go back to a reminder. Remember we said that when the sufficient condition does obtain, that means that the consequent is guaranteed. Remember also we said that the necessary condition is the one without which another event won't obtain. So denying the consequent is the analog in terms of, of logical correctness to affirming the antecedent. Okay, so we do yield a necessary inference when we uh, deny the consequent, right? Remember, uh, we have if sufficient condition, then necessary condition. And then when we say, well, well, wait a minute, the necessary condition didn't obtain, that means that the sufficient condition did not obtain. Let's go back to our uh, previous example. If I'm not presently on social media, then I'm not presently logged into Instagram. If I'm presently logged into Instagram, I am presently on social media. If it's not the case that I am presently on social media, I can't be logged into Instagram. I hope this discussion helps clarify the logical structure of the conditional claim specifically with respect to the sufficient condition and the necessary condition, as well as clarifying what a sufficient condition is, what a necessary condition is, and what each is not. In other words, uh, how each functions uh, and how each uh, is said to function successfully.